How's everybody doing today? This is Chuck from Mining with Uncle Chuck. I hope you are well. Today's video, I am going to take the factory control board out of my Ice River KS3L, the five terahash model, and swap it out with one that's hopefully going to get me closer to the six terahash, similar to the KS3M. Now you're probably saying, hey Chuck, why don't you just use the free overclocks? Well, yes, the free overclocks have been available for the KS zeros and the ones and the twos over the last couple of weeks, but the GUI method or the easy method is not yet available for the KS3L. That being said, I did use the Eclipse method and logged into the file system of the miner, and we'll talk about that in a minute and kind of the results that I had there. So what control board am I putting in here? Is it a factory KS3M? Now I know a few guys that have done the direct swap. Two of them it worked, one of them it didn't. What am I using? Well, over here in the box, I have a modified KS3L control board, and I purchased it from a supplier that I've been dealing with in China for quite some time, and I do trust. So is it a Frankenstein? I don't know. We'll have to find out. It's probably very similar to the one that Greater Good Mining got, but we'll find out. Before we move forward, make sure you subscribe to the channel, you like the video, and we're gonna power this thing down, crack this box, and get into it. So we are in the dashboard of my stock Ice River KS3L and I honestly thought that this was the best place to start before I rip this thing apart and swap the control board so we can look at my hash rate now and we see what kind of changes after the swap. So we are over 5,000 giga hash, so just over five tera hash and I have been mining to hum pool. Yes, I've tried other pools and I've been happy here, so this is where I've been. And our 24 hour hash rate, just close to that real five tera hash. Now let's get into a little bit of the backstory. About a month ago, I guess, my supplier in China reached out to me and said, hey Chuck, we have these modified KS3L control boards. So this is from our kind of our WhatsApp conversation. And it's just me saying, so the KS3M control board is the same one that comes in the miner, correct? And a response, it's not the same. It's just that the KS3L chip with the IC could be upgraded to the KS3L hash rate not the same as the KS3M. After receiving that response, I decided, well, I'll do a little bit more digging. I reached out to Ice River Support, and this is a response that I got back from a guy there. Now, there was more than one. Dear customer, this first bit has nothing to do with it. About the KS3M control board, as we post on our Twitter, we did not recommend customer use the KS3M control board to run in the KS3L miner. Due to the difference in chip performance between the KS3M and the KS3L, the control board may not help the KS3L to reach the six tera hash. In addition, if the customer changes the control board model, it will cause the warranty lost and any damage caused by this change will be the responsibility of the customer. So very clear, but I do know people that have been successful with a, just a direct swap. So what about the overclocks for the Ice River KS3L? Well, as I already mentioned, and most of you know, the free overclocks have been available the last couple of weeks or so for the KS0, 1, and 2, the easy method or the GUI method that I mentioned. Prior to that, you had to use a software called Eclipse and log into the file system of your miner, something that I wouldn't recommend. As far as the KS3L, the easy method is not available at this point in time. So I did end up using the Eclipse method, got inside the file system of the KS3L, which we're inside Eclipse now. I didn't capture any footage, to be honest. Although I was successful, I wasn't happy with the results. Just as an example, you gotta get in here, go into config, create a backup folder for the originals in case you screw something up, copy a couple of these files, drag them in, do the same and update, copy a couple of the originals, drag them into the folder you created, just in case you mess anything up. I ended up reverting my miner back to factory because I really wasn't that happy. Now, what did I see result-wise? Well, my heat's increased substantially. I did get a higher hash rate, up to close to 5.8 tera hash, but it would drop down to 4.2, 4.3. So I said, you know what? I am just going to wait. I'd like to add, for all the guys that put the time in on these 
free overclocks, I'm gonna put their donation link down below. Everybody that's using these overclocks, they've increased your hash rate, your profitability, throw them a bone. Enough said, we're gonna get downstairs, take apart this KS3L and get in this new modified control board. Okay, so we've got our Ice River KS3L here and I've got it flipped around so this is the exhaust side of the miner, so obviously where the hot air comes out. So I've already gone ahead and I removed some of the screws. So I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly here. So the first thing you wanna do is to remove these top two screws here, and I will flip the miner around and remove the two top screws here. And this is how we will get the plate off, the top plate, and then gently wiggle it, and that's it. It's that easy. Now, if this was a Bitman at miner, you would have to remove the top of the power supply as well. In this case, we don't. Now, I've already gone ahead and I've loosened these screws up. Now, to get to the control board or remove it, you just simply want to remove these two screws here. Again, I've already started on that. I'll remove these. And uh, it's taking a little longer here. The front face plate will come out, come off, and then you'll have the ability to slide the actual control board. So as you can see, our control board kind of wiggles and moves freely, but we do need to remove some of the connections on the board before we can pull it out of here. What I like to do is the cables that go down to the hash board, mark them one, two, and three. You don't have to do this. And when you go to remove these, I've kind of loosened everything up. There's just little clips here. You got to get under them very carefully and pull them out and you've got fan connections to the fans here and fan connections here to the fans here. And we simply, as I said, I've already loosened these up. So I'm going to remove these. I am going to gently wiggle the two connections to the fans in the front. And this is to the power supply. Two more fan connections here. Again, we wanna gently wiggle these like so, and the one here. Now, we should be free to slide out this control board. But you know what, again, warning for any of this, I should have said this before I started, is as soon as you take the cover off the top of this thing, you know what, you could void your warranty. So, we'll move forward. I should be able to just easily slide out the control board like so. Now we're gonna pull out the other one, the new modified control board, and take a look and see if we can notice any differences. So I've got a magnifying setup here, and I don't know if you guys can see it. Did kind of a deep dive in, looked at a lot of the different components on the board, and this one at the bottom here, this wind bond, is definitely different between my factory KS3L control board and the modified one that I received. And again, you might be able to see this here. If not, I took some photos as well. So let's get this new one in and see what we end up with hash rate wise. So I wanna show you one quick thing here before I slide this thing in here. As you can see on both sides here, there's a little groove like a track. That is where you wanna slide this board into. It will slide underneath and you'll get it in there, everything put back together and you'll realize that the plate will not fit on the front of your miner. All right, so I'm gonna get everything put back together in reverse of what we did to take it apart. So we've got our KS3L back together with the new modified control board inside. Let's power it up and hopefully we don't have smoke. Okay, we got this thing all set back up. Power to it, ethernet. Let's flip the switch and see what happens. Well, we've got power and there's no smoke yet. Let's head to the computer and let's check it out. Okay, we're back in the dashboard of the Ice River KS3L. I had to rescan my network, obviously because of the new control board, and I am going to quickly delete the information Ice River has in here, put in mine, and I'll be back with you in a moment. I've got my information in here now. I've made one change just on the worker name. I called it something different than before, KS3LM. Click save, the miner, we're gonna reboot it. I'm gonna give it a few minutes or so, and hopefully we'll have hash rate and be up in mining. So I decided to leave the KS3L up in mining for almost 24 hours, as you can see. I wanted to give all of you, and to be honest, myself, 
a really good idea of what the consistent hash rate is gonna be with this thing over time. At the moment, we are over 6,400 giga hash, so 6.4 plus tera hash. We can all see here that we've been consistently over that the period this miner has been up in mining. Now, what about our heats? We're sitting at 34 and 54 degrees Celsius on our exhaust and intake. So this thing is running ridiculously well. Now, compared to the overclocks I did with Eclipse, it was all over the map and running up into the 70s. So as I said, I did revert back. If we take a look, now what are we sitting at as far as power consumption at the wall? I did take a look at that as well. So the top number here is the voltage. The bottom is the amperage. If we take our amperage times voltage, that will give us our wattage at the wall, which is 3,342 watts. How does that compare to prior to me upgrading this control board, well, I was sitting at just over 3,200 watts and my temperatures and everything were about the same. So we're looking at just over 200 watts at the wall with this KS3L or whatever modified control board. As you can see up here, I've been doing this video over a number of days. So now we've been up and mining for two days and 22 hours. We have been over six terahash or 6,200 plus giga hash. Overall, if we were to compare this to, again, that factory KS3L control board, I was sitting at just over 5,000 giga hash. So we are approximately 1,100, 1,200 giga hash or 1 1.2 terahash higher than where we were before the actual swap. So let's head over real quick to Humpool and let's take a look at our profits because now we've got a few days to look at. So we are in the dashboard of Humpool. Let's take a look at where we're at at the moment. We've got our 15 minute, one hour and 24 hour hash rate. So we're sitting at 6.25 terahash. So I'm very happy with this. Now, how is this gonna translate into profits? Well, let's take a quick look. I'm gonna go roll back a page here. Now, if you don't know, with Humpool, you get paid out every 12 hours. So two payments a day. So you have to take your two totals, add them together to kind of get your daily profitability. So we'll go to our current page here and we're gonna use, we'll just go down here to the 12th as an example. So I'm gonna take my 772.1 plus my 762.51 CASPA for my daily total. And this is before we did the swap. That gives us 1,534.61 CASPA. Now the next day here, you could see the second part of the day. This is where we did our swap. So we will move forward to the next day, which is the 14th. These two payments, these would be the first 24 hours of profit. So we were higher here, then a little lower, and we will go up to today. Now I just had my second payout, so we'll use this as an, as an example. We will take our 886.28 CASPA plus the 903.55. That gives us 1,789.83 CASPA minus our prior daily profits. Gives us a difference of 255.2 to CASPA. What does that translate to? And, and to mention, yes, I do have a KS0 here, but it really doesn't factor into anything because the increase in hash rate was solely from the actual swap of the KS3L control board. Let's quickly head over. Let's take our 255.22 CASPA. We'll put that into the currency converter over at CoinMarketCap. 255.22. It's telling us $11.42 a day difference. Obviously, this isn't factored in your electrical, but as you can see prior, we already looked at that. There's only 112 watts difference at the wall after this upgrade. So 11.42, and that is based on today's rate of CASPA of 0 0.04. 4477 and obviously the ghost in the room. Casper's hash rate today is 51.17 petahash, which is absolutely crazy. We haven't seen a lot of movement over the last week, but that is going to change because first of all, Bitmain is shipping a brand new batch of KS3s and Ice River is getting ready to ship another batch of miners as well. Overall, I'm very happy with the results so far. If you've done a swap, whether it's just a factory KS3M control board into your KS3L, let me know your, in the comments down below. I'm curious to see what kind of results you're getting. And if you've got one of these modified control boards like I have, I'm definitely curious to see your results as well too.
Anyway, that's it for this video, but you're gonna wanna watch my next one because I have got, and you're gonna figure out what they are, two brand new Caspa full-size Asics, the most powerful at the moment I should have any day here. I'm gonna rip those boxes open as soon as I get them and we'll talk about it. Enough said, make sure you subscribe to the channel and you like the video, peace out.